Hey Flock, Ariel over here at Fineth, where today I want to do a quick look at what is going on in my garden. First, I'm a little bit discouraged today, I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but first, up until yesterday, everything looked absolutely awesome in the garden. It's not very far along compared to a lot of warmer areas, but I just want to walk around here and show you guys what's growing. A lot of this stuff's very little, but all those little tiny green things are baby carrots of various kinds growing through there. A couple weeds like that guy I need to pull out. Got a few marigolds, got some bigger chard, smaller chard, golden beets, a mixture of different kinds of beets. Those are really little babies. You can just barely see the little green leaves. Red onions, I believe. I'd have to look at my map for sure. Those might be yellow ones. My next bed, I've got quite a few kinds of radishes. I, You can see there's three different varieties there. I get lazy when I plant seeds and they seem so small and it just seems such a shame to not use them. And then I end up with this. These little guys are so far much too close. Um, radishes are not going to grow well when they're that close. So in a day or so here, um, I'm going to actually go through and just pull a bunch of the, the closest ones out, kind of thin them which is a silly thing to make yourself have to do by wasting your time to thin them, but I'm gonna put these little babies into a salad and eat them. But if you can have self-control to actually plant things and take the time to just roll out the seeds in little, that was actually, those are such straight rows because that was a leftover seed tape a friend gave me. I don't normally buy my seeds that way. Um, or to plant them in neat little, oh, I'll show you in a minute neat little individual holes, then you don't have to thin things and they all have room to grow and are healthy. Anyway, back to the tour. Leeks are growing. Broccoli is growing. That's either the yellow or the red onions, whichever the other one wasn't. Cabbage growing. Got lots of kales here. I love kale. This is like a green and pink kale. Um, this is a green kale. That is a dark purpley kale. Again, I did not plant individual seeds on these. I should have. I'm trying to get better at this. Um, this is cauliflower. Here I did plant pretty close to individual seeds. You can see how everything is kind of in, in neat little rows. I, I punched little holes. But even here, I would often drop two or three seeds in at once just because they're so tiny. And so again, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to pull out these leaves and just use them in a salad. So that there's only like one left in each hole so they can grow. Um, these are more red beets. I love beets. Love pickled beets. Love them in salads. Love them sauteed. I have... Boy, sometimes I have to look at my garden map when everything is so little to remember what is where. But I have more... I have some other kinds of like loose leaf cabbage and, and collards I'm trying there. I've never grown either one, but they're supposed to both be a little bit cold tolerant and quick growing, so we'll see what happens. I've got lots more carrots. I'm not a big fan of grocery store carrots, and I know you probably can't really see these at all. They're so little still and feathery looking. But I love good fresh garden carrots. These are um, Brussels sprouts. Here we come to why I'm a little discouraged today. So you see those dirt piles off on the edge of the garden? Uh, bed, you know, kind of coming out onto the mulch. There's like three piles down this side, two on that side, and then you see peas I did take the time to plant, you know, like I should have planted all, all the stuff in, you know, nicely spaced individual seeds, and you can see how they're coming up like that until you get to here. You can see how there's a gap. Everything else is in this nice, nice, neat square, and then you have a gap. That is because a vole ate through there. I don't know if they actually eat the plants, you know, because they want the plants, or if they just eat them because they're tunneling. I don't know why this uh, exactly happens, but you can see kind of where the tunnel must have went under there, because you can see the missing peas on both sides of their trellis, and over here. Now at the moment there's enough peas that it will fill back in, and it's not a disaster. Some more missing ones there, close to that dirt pile. But um, I was hoping I had gotten rid of my voles last year, because they really ate a lot of things last year and they are virtually impossible to get rid of. The first couple of years I had a garden here, I just didn't have them. One of my neighbors kind of over the hill has had a lot of them. She has tried all of the various um, 
everything that suggested the little vibrators, the windmills, the peppermint oil to repel them. I've tried all of those things, plus the little smoke bombs, plus tried to have cats, that didn't work, um, plus, uh, I forget what all. Anyway, they can really destroy an entire garden, and I am a little bit concerned that they will continue to munch through these beds because I found one new hole over there this morning. I found these tunnels yesterday. Um, that they will continue to munch through and potentially eat every single thing in my garden. When I move to a more permanent location, what I would like to do for multiple reasons is have a raised garden bed, and I would like to build them, I think, out of concrete block. So instead of just having these low beds like this, I would like to have, you know, a, maybe two or three concrete blocks high, because eventually someday I'm going to be an old woman instead of a younger woman. And that would put it up at like waist height so you could n not have to bend all the time. And so it would do a couple things. I wouldn't have to bend all the time. I, um, it would be easier to just reach everything. I could even sit on the edge of the blocks, you know, to work in my garden. It would uh, make it easier to keep all the weeds out. And I would, you know, with concrete block on the side, I'd put like a hardware cloth underneath so that nothing like a vole could chew through and destroy my food for the year. So I have not come up with anything else that works. I'm not even sure this works, but I did put some little poison pellets down in those burrows um, yesterday. They're down under there, so hopefully none of my chipmunks or anything else find them. Hopefully a vole just eats them and goes away, because if you have ever had these in the, your garden, this is so disheartening. When, like I said, until two days ago, everything else looked really good, and I'm afraid they're going to eat every single thing in here. But I'm going to hope that I'm wrong. Over here I've got a third planting of carrots, which are still really tiny, you can barely see them, and squashes along this middle trellis, um, like zucchinis and, and soft summer squashes. You can just see some of them are just starting to sprout there on both sides of the trellis. They'll grow up it, and then I've got little carrots off on the side here, and some other greens off on the side there that we can grow between the... there's probably the biggest one between the zucchinis and so on. And they grow all kinds of fun shapes. Hopefully they'll all grow. My potatoes have just started coming up. You can see little green sprouties shoving through the ground there. Not all of them are up. Some are like there. Those you can barely see and so on. But that whole bed is potatoes. White and pink and purple and yellow. Then I've got garlic, which looks pretty good. Here's my other fresh overnight evidence of vole activity. I've got cucumbers down the center of this bed and I don't think I've seen one of them sprout. Oh, I'm wrong. There is a sprout just coming through. Not that you could tell it's going to be a cucumber plant yet. <laughs> but again, on the sides, I've got some other little greens, um, various kinds of lettuces and arugulas and so on. You know, some green ones. Uh, you know, I'll go from like butter crunch to like a red lettuce to another leafy green and so on. So just lots of greens down the sides there. Got more onions over here, yellow and red. And then I've got some beans, um, just like a little bush bean. And they again are just starting to poke through. Today is the first I've actually seen evidence of them above the ground. But you can see them shoving up through the dirt in several places. And then the last bed is my strawberries asparagus, um, horseradish, and rhubarb. And this asparagus I'm curious about because this has been an experiment for me. I've never heard of anybody starting asparagus from seed. They all buy plants. But everywhere that sells asparagus plants here, they're, for one little stock, it's like 14 bucks. And I just couldn't justify buying a whole row of those to plant. And a pack of seeds was only a few dollars, so I got some seeds and thought I'd give it a shot. So I planted them last year. They took forever to come up. I didn't think they were going to grow at all. And then they did. And then this spring, I didn't see them for a long time, and I thought they were not going to come back. And then they did. And they, I mean, there's my finger for a sense of scale. These are so such tiny little stalks. I did not make any attempt to harvest any this year. I'm just letting them, you know, when you eat asparagus, you break it off when it's still like this. You can see how tiny that is. But when it would be at that stage before it starts to get feathery. 
So I'm just letting them grow out to be the, the feathery plant as much as possible this year and maybe for another year even to, to feed those roots. But hopefully eventually those root systems will get uh, strong enough to push up some good harvestable asparagus sprouts through there. And I do have two varieties here. I'd have to look at my map to remember which is which. One clearly, I don't know if it's actually stronger or if it just grows a little quicker. Those two rows are much taller than these two rows, though they're growing as well. So that's my asparagus experiment to see if I can eventually get harvestable asparagus from seeds. So that is what is growing in my garden. Hopefully the voles decide that this is a bad place to live and move on back out. And other than that, everything else is looking good. Hope whatever you guys are growing is doing well for you as well. Thanks for watching folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.